Welcome everyone to Deep in the Plus. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but if you're tuning in for the first time, just welcome. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside, and tonight we are going to be talking about uh, our first Lindsay Lohan movie. Uh, it's going to be Freaky Friday, and with me to talk about it is my friend Desi. Desi, thank you for being here. Jumbo, it's Wednesday. I've got my pink on. Let's do this. <laughs> Again, I don't... Why is that a thing? <laughs> It's just the fetch thing to do, Rob. Oh, sorry. That's the wrong Lindsay Lohan era. Sorry, we're just talking what? about the uh, the Disney stuff. Um, so Lindsay Lohan was kind of the queen of the late 90s, early 2000s Disney. Uh, she did Parent Trap. She did uh, Freaky Friday, Life Size, um, uh, I don't know. The Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, get a clue. We're going to go through all of them except for Life Size because Life Size actually isn't on Disney+. Plus. Uh, for some reason, it's Life Size 2 is, but Disney does not have Life Size, the first movie, on there. So we're going to talk about that later uh, if it ever comes up. But right now, we've got five movies to talk about in August that are all Lindsay Lohan, starting with Freaky Friday and Desi. What, what's your memory of this movie? Did you get to see it in a theater? Was it something that you just happened to see on TV? What's What's the deal? I went to go see it in the theater. I think I'm about the same age as Lindsay Lohan. I'm not sure if it's like the exact number, but I was in the same age range. So I was in high school and college in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, so this was this came out probably right around my high school years. So um, I saw it at the time and thought it was cute, but then I never saw it again until today. So, um, we'll talk about it at the end whether you think it holds up or not, but when you go to pull this up on Disney+, Plus, you might get a little confused because there are actually more than one version of Freaky Friday. This one's obviously not the original. The original one was with Jodie Foster uh, back in, I think it was 1976 maybe? Um, and then they, there was uh, another version of it that happened... Uh, which isn't on Disney Plus in 1995 with Shelley Long. That one was done for The Wonderful World of Disney. There were like three remakes they did. They did Computer War Tennis Shoes with Kirk Cameron. They did um, the, a remake of Flubber with Harry Anderson. And then they did the Shelley Long Freaky Friday. And then in 2003, they went back to the cinema with, uh, with this movie with Lindsay Lohan and, um, and Jamie Lee Curtis. And then there, in 2018, which I didn't know about this, there was a musical version of Freaky Friday. I only knew about the original and this one. Who knew? Well, I had no idea. There were so many Freaky Fridays. Yep, right here you can see uh, the Freaky Friday uh, on the bottom there. The first one's the Jodie Foster and the second one is the musical one. I, I started watching that. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so, you know, we picked this one again because it's Lindsay Lohan month and we love Lindsay. But when we're looking at the Freaky Friday movies, like they're the four movies. So that's, they've done it four times. Yet... The woman who wrote the books, Mary Rogers, wrote a trilogy. And really? so, yeah, and so the first one was Freaky Friday. The second one uh, was, like, called Boris's Millions or something like that. Uh, and then uh, and then they changed the name of it later on. And then the third one was called Summer Switch, and it was actually her brother switches places with her dad on his way to summer camp. So why we keep remaking this one is interesting, but it, it's, it's, it's it, freaky. Okay, sure. We'll say <laughs> that it's freaky. Um, but then it's not the only swap movie. Obviously the swap movies are, are, are pretty, uh, um, pretty common. There was the, the 13 going on 30 that with, um, Jennifer Garner, Loved that one. there was the Zac Efron one. There's, um, there's just so many swap switched movies where it just they all have a different premise in the way that they're put together. This one I feel I like think there was there was another Disney Channel original movie where two sisters swapped places. I can't remember what that one's called. Yeah, it's freaky. Um, so there must be something about this kind of style movie that we just as a society love. Either that or they're just really cheap to make. I, I don't I don't know. Um, you only have to hire the two actresses and then they just pretend like they're the other actress. Um, I do think, though, that in this movie, that can go horribly wrong. And I feel <laughs> like Lindsay Lohan, and you tell me if you disagree, I feel like Lindsay Lohan does a better job of acting like Jamie Lee Curtis than Jamie Lee Curtis does of acting like Lindsay Lohan. Or is it just that when the parents act like kids, it's more cringy? 
Yeah, maybe that's it. Because, I don't know. It, w- it was kind of weird to see Jamie Lee Curtis go like, like, it it didn't seem natural. And even at the end of the movie, though, when Lindsay Lohan did that same action, um, I felt like it wasn't natural. It was something that maybe a director came up with, is that Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be the thumbs up, and uh, Lindsay Lohan was going to be the rock on. Um, but I don't know. Neither one of them seemed to pull off the rock on. <laughs> True. So... This is Jin. the The first movie was basically, I feel like, more Jodie Foster's movie. Um, this one, who's the star? Do we assume Lindsay Lohan is the star just because it's Lindsay Lohan Ryan. month? <laughs> Ryan. Um, Mark Harmon, you mean? Is that who you're talking about? Yes, the is stepdad. He a, is he a dreamboat? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I totally forgot he was even in this movie until I watched it again today. Best Mark Harmon movie ever, Summer School. Fight me. <laughs> so good. You know what we need, oh, Wonder Mutt? I mean, besides bread, we need a woman who understands us. Yeah, that's just that's just such a, a good, solid movie. Um, this one had a good cast, and we'll get to the cast in a little bit. But um, as we get into this particular story, it starts how so many of these kind of movies start is with the alarm clock, right? It's the, the, mm-hmm. the, the zeroing in on the kid. I mean, isn't Xenon started like that? It feels like just a ton of things yeah. start with the, the kid and hitting the alarm clock or, you know, somebody waking up to an alarm clock. Uh, and then she can't get out of bed. And then she has like this evil little brother. And I think that in context, we're learning that her brother annoys her. Um, and then mom is getting ready. So mom is like meditating and having a good morning. And then she's got all this tech. Um, which is kind of by today's standards a little bit hilarious. It's one of the things that makes us feel dated, and it's, I mean, 2003. We're not talking about, like, 1970. It's, like, 2003 when that happens. Um, unless I'm wrong, do you go to work with a personal, like, a PDA and uh, and a phone and a pager? Uh, and I, I don't go to work, Rob. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah, so, uh, so they go off to work. And uh, and school, and she drops her off, and then mom kind of embarrasses her with her nemesis Stacy, um, and it's just you know they're they're I've, they're really trying hard to show you how much friction there is between the mom and the and uh, and the daughter between uh, the mom and Anna, and when uh, you know it's just oh you don't understand, and she's in a rock band, and all this stuff is just you know ev- everything is so like they're just not on the same page, even though mom is seemingly trying very hard to be on the same page with her. Um, you know, and then they don't really talk a lot about the dad, but it looks like the dad has passed away and, mm-hmm. and, and now, uh, mom has found someone else and, uh, the marriage is going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> One of the things I started thinking about was if this was going to happen during the school day, like that's the thing that's confusing to me, I guess, is that this is freaky Friday, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's Friday. So it's like the last day of the week. So they're, they're all getting ready for the rest of the, of the weekend. And so it's really convenient almost that it happened on a Friday. So they only had to suffer through it one day. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm glad that uh, she didn't have to wake up and marry the guy and have a honeymoon with him the next day. You're a Mean Girls not. fan, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so do you get Mean Girl vibes from her high school experience in this movie? Yes, Stacy is a Regina George wannabe. Absolutely. That is exactly what I thought of when I saw this. Although, um, I don't know if I want to call her Katie Bob. Anna's friends are as cool as Katie's friends. So, Janice and Damien are hard to beat. Although, Katie's friend is a soul skater. So okay. she's got that going for her. Okay. All right. First of all, Tony Stank in chat just brought up Brink. And apparently <laughs> that's so, so we're going to go there. Um, tell me this doesn't feel like your boy. Uh, he wishes he was Eric Von Detten, but yes, he's an Eric Von Detten wannabe. <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, uh oh, Desi's going to have words about this. <laughs> Is it a good thing or a bad thing? He looks exactly like the kind of guy I would have had a crush on back in the late 90s, early 2000s. 
that like uh, long skater boy hair, um, the the dreamy eyes. Yeah, he he had it all going for him. He was the typical what you would expect '90s two thousands uh, heartthrob to be. Gotcha. Um, and and as we were talking about outdated tech, here's some right here. This PDA, which I feel like she's using the wrong way. I thought the whole idea was to use a <laughs> stylus on it, but um, I guess when you're driving and uh, and checking your PDA, you don't you don't do it that way. But um, she did use a stylus at one point, though. When she was Lindsay Lohan, she used the stylus. Gotcha. When she was in Anna's body as Tess. Um. Yeah, so Tess is a psychiatrist, whereas in the original movie, it was uh, the mother was a stay-at-home mom. Um, so I think again, they're trying to bring this into the you know the next generation of like you know mom is out working, the daughter is at school, they don't understand each other, they're not on the same wavelength, uh, life gets in the way, they're too busy, they're not really seeing eye to eye. That's the whole point. Um, so they're getting ready to go. Uh, you know, to do their, their day. And so we get to see their day as they live it, right? Like that's the, mm -hmm. that's kind of like the baseline. So we get to see their day as they live it. So we're introduced to all of their regular problems and how they've been accustomed to handling them. And then the next day is the fish out of water thing, the kind of the right. reverse, the, um, you know, the, like now that you're in my shoes, how are you going to handle this situation? So it does feel very like, you know, they've paved the way in Act 1, and it's almost in, in divided in thirds. The movie's about an hour 38, um, which for a theater movie is, I guess, about standard. But then again, I've seen a lot of Marvel movies, and it feels like they're all like two and a half hours long. So when you're watching this and you're seeing, um, you know, the time, it's like about 30 minutes in when they first do the the switch. So you got that first bit which is the, hey, this is how their lives are. And then you got that second bit, which is like, we're trying to adjust to this. And then the third bit is how do we resolve it? Um, right. And that's, you know, the middle is where the funny is. The first part is the frustrating. The middle is the funny. And then the last part is the, the, the heartstrings, I would assume. Do you feel right. that? Yeah. No, definitely. Um, I, I didn't realize that the first part of it was 30 minutes. It felt quicker than that. I thought the majority of the movie was more of them in each other's bodies than that. So, um, what's going on, Rob? Nothing. What you doing? <laughs> so you heard a lot of banging. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, um, one of the things that I've just noticed again, and I, I'm not sure if it was the Lindsay Lohan had a better grasp on how to do this, or if uh, if it was the you know the kid dynamic of like an adult trying to seem like a little kid, but I think Lindsay Lohan did an amazing job as the mom and convincing you that she was different. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think back to that, and I think about how. Um, she was in the parent trap, which we'll talk about, you know, at the end of the month. But I mean, this is kind of her wheelhouse as being somebody else within the same movie. Being it feels two like. different people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mean Girls, sort of. Yeah. yeah. She's got her uh, plastic Katie and her um, the greatest people you'll ever meet, Katie. Yeah. Um. So the way that that. We live through their days, and then they go out to the uh, to this nice restaurant uh, for dinner. And at the Asian restaurant, we meet, um, or it's a Chinese restaurant. We meet um, Pei Pei, I think is her name, and her mom. And the mom is deciding that like she's gonna basically put this curse on them uh, to switch bodies. So she has planned this. Whereas I feel like in some of the other things, it's not so like other swap things. It's sort of, sort of more accidental, or it's yeah. some kind of voodoo. This one felt right. like it was done on purpose to them. Yes, I did get that. Also, um, I feel like this grandma was typecast in. Fr fresh off the boat because she's like the same exact character in that. Um, but yeah, in a lot of the other ones, it's like, you know, some kind of magic has happened. Um, the thing that I thought was interesting was that, you know, the earthquake happened, but they didn't switch immediately. It still waited and happened overnight. But when 
the earthquake happened the second time, they switched bodies immediately. So yeah. I don't understand how this uh, fortune cookie voodoo works. Uh, you have to ask Pepe's mom. Because actually, that's how she's credited as Pepe's mom. So here she is uh, deciding she's going to interfere a little bit and give them the evil fortune cookies to swap them and, and cause all this pain and problem. Um, but yeah, I, I was going to bring that up too, is that once they read the fortune and then they the, the you have the earthquake, they don't switch until the clock hits midnight. And it was interesting the way they show the switch because the mom goes from her normal sleeping position to laying flat face first like the daughter and vice versa. So it was neat to see it that way. But in the original movie, there's a bad – I don't know if you remember it. There's a bad transition where the two of them, like like they're – almost like their souls cross like this digitally um, like at the same time. So I haven't seen the original since I was like a kid. Yeah. So, I feel like sometimes, though, that. like, it, I guess it just depends on the movie, but sometimes it feels like, um, you know, the, 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 the switch is a delay. It happens when they wake up. Um, but I think that, that that's fine as long as you establish those boundaries of the switch being the same. So to your point, when they switch back, it happens instantaneously, which right. doesn't seem to Why make Why wouldn't it much. happen at midnight? Like they had their freaky Friday, so then when they wake up on Saturday, everything should be back to normal. I don't really understand how this works. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't think it's consistent, and I think that is a little bit of a problem in it. Not enough to matter, but a little bit of a problem. So um, the the problem for them switching for Lindsay Lohan's character Anna is that she and her band are trying out for like the band event of a lifetime and in in the uh the musical remake um the the big thing is that they want to go on a scavenger hunt and it's the big scavenger hunt and i thought uh, that doesn't seem like you have as high as stakes here um you know, <laughs> she has this band and they they are good and they want to enter this uh they want to be in the the kiss fm wango tango which is an actual show that iheart does that every it? year it is so like when we were watching it and they were like we we're, we got a chance to get in wango tango first of all that's not how wango tango works so if you're looking to try and get in that's not how that works but well oh, go good ahead. I was gonna say, but like the but the, we were like, wait a minute, is that really like they're using Wango Tango? They literally use Kiss FM's Wango Tango, which happens in L.A. every summer. Sorry. I don't understand how they could even sign up for the Wango Tango if they're all 15 years old. Like, don't their parents need to sign off on this? Shouldn't uh, Tess be consulted before she's able to go on? Did all of the rest of them get their parents on board? Yeah. I don't know how this happened. Don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know those roles, which again, you know, I, we're probably nitpicking a little bit at this point, but I, I, <laughs> um, I don't know if that's if that's how that works. Um, but the whole deal is she wants to go, but it's the rehearsal dinner. So the mom's just like any other right. night, we would be okay with this. And she's like... No, no, I need it to be tonight, and you're so mean, and you don't let me do things. and You're so ruining so my forth. life. Yeah, exactly. Were you like that with, with your mom growing up? Oh, totally, 100%. Moms and teenage daughters just, in general, don't get along. So that's why you see things like Ms. Marvel and um, what's the May May movie? Oh, my goodness, Big Red Panda. What is that called? Turning Red. Turning Red. Yes, turning red. Like, it's all about the struggles between teenage girls and their mothers. Just in general, don't get along. Yeah. I, so, yeah. So it, the struggle is real, is what you're telling me. It is. It is. Okay. Um, so the big thing for the mom is obviously she's getting married. And so she's got all of these wedding plans that she's trying to put together. She's planning her own wedding, which also happens in the musical version, the 2018 musical version, only in the 2018 musical version, the mom's a caterer. And so she's catering her own wedding. Um, so uh, this one, she's trying to order food at the last minute, like literally two days beforehand, she's arguing with a caterer about food. Um, she's trying to put all kinds of other things together. And, it really is funny how 
the things that mattered so much to the mom don't seem to matter as much when she when she loses them. You know what I'm saying? Like we put all this pressure on us for our lives and everything is just so bad. And when you get to step away from it for a little while, maybe it's not as bad as you think. And sometimes, unfortunately, it happens because of uh, health reasons or because of, you know, some other kind of thing that offers perspective in our lives, right? And so in this, all of these things were so hard for them when they switch bodies, all of those other things seem to go away and they're not really worried about them as much. You're really worried more about how am I going to get through this day? I mean, really, I would rather have Chinese food than halibut anyways. So... I feel like Lindsay Lohan did her a favor. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the the cast a little bit. We're talking about Lindsay Lohan, obviously. Avi. Uh, Jamie the Lee Curtis. The soul skater. Um, when you say the soul skater, who are we talking about here? Uh, well, talk- she's Gabby and Brink. I don't know what her name is here. She's the uh, lead singer from the band. Oh, right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, she went on to do some stuff more recently as well. I forget. Vidal, I think is her last name. Like Christina Vidal, I think. Um, she'll and... always be Gabby from Brink to me. Gotcha. Chad Michael Murray, who, uh, yes, yeah. that's his name. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who I labeled in my notes as Brink kind of a guy. Definitely Brink kind of a guy. Yeah. Uh, Mark Harmon, who plays Ryan, who just is is just perfect like mark Harmon is great i kind of want to know his backstory like what was he seems like such a nice guy did he not have a wife and children or anything before he met jamie lee curtis because he seemed kind of older uh, it's not really ryan's story now is it <laughs> maybe in the uh wacky wednesday or whatever the next movie is so here's an interesting little tidbit that i found out there there's a scene where after they switch the uh lindsay or anna is as mom in mom's office and this guy comes in a delivery guy comes in and she says something like hi steve and he says my name is boris and he points to his name tag the guy it's kevin she called him evan no she called him evan gotcha um so yeah, so the that is I, I think the guy's name is Mark McClure, is that right? Um yes, Mark McClure. Okay. So I used he to work with a guy named Mark McClure. So. Yeah, that's him. That's him. You didn't recognize him. That's crazy. Yeah, it's Mark McClure is the actor's name, but when I saw him the first thing I thought of is he was Jimmy Olsen in the um Christopher Reeve uh, uh Superman movies. Oh. But he was actually um in the first Freaky Friday. Really? And he played a character named Boris. So it like so cool. it was actually important. Here's this this website showing the picture of the two. It was actually important that um, you know the the name Boris in there. So it was a throwback to the original. So he was kind of the Chad Michael Murray character in this one, like the love interest. And Interesting. Um, that's why I think that uh, he was supposed to be, or that that character is the star of um, Mayor Rogers' second book. And, and so I keep looking for the name of it, but it was it was called like Millions for Boris or something like that. Um, wow. Yeah. And cool. fun little fact: a, a billion for Boris is what it was called. And that was, the, again, that was the middle of the trilogy. Uh, apparently it was about like some kind of a um, a magical TV that when you watched it, you could see tomorrow's news. And so, oh. yeah, so that he could find out what the lottery numbers were, etc. Wow. Okay. I think that should have been a movie, but they just decided to make... Was he still make... dating Anna? Yes. Uh, he oh. was. They decided to make eighteen Freaky Fridays rather than actually go one more, one deep booker, uh, one book deeper into this whole series. Um, so anyway, then in the musical version, the dog's name is Boris. That's cute. Yeah. I like that. So there is kind of a common thread there that happens that connects all of this back to the book, back to the first movie, uh, which is kind of cool. So, just thought that was worth mentioning. So she goes in. Um, to the um, 
to the office and kind of messes thing, everything up for mom. But on the way in, she decides to get a makeover and she has her hair cut short, which makes sense because I feel like Jamie Lee Curtis in this has like the world's worst wig before the haircut. So I assume, <laughs> I assume that this was, you know, her actual, like when she got it cut, that that was her actual hair. I, I, I have no idea if that was her actual hair or a wig. But yeah, I mean this. So it just looked it looked a little off to me. And when she got the haircut, I went, "Oh, that's probably why." So here's before the haircut. But it wasn't yeah. all of that extreme. It didn't seem like it was necessary as part of the whole thing. But obviously, she goes and makes a does a makeover for her mom. Uh, and and uh, buys new clothes and uh, gets a haircut and p another ear piercing and uh, and all that and then she goes and picks up the Volvo and she drives it and so she's just starting to enjoy being mom. Uh, the except... credit cards seemed like they came out way too often for two shopping bags and a haircut. It seemed like she was using the credit card like for. 50 different things and then it didn't look like she walked out with that much yeah so you're saying she uh bought some stuff for other people you think she got robbed what is what happened or maybe she bought each thing individually like on separate transactions i want this pair of shoes with this credit card i want the dress with this credit card i don't know it just seemed like a lot of montage of credit card credit card credit card but without a lot of actual stuff in her bags I also I feel like, and maybe I don't understand this, is it seems like she walked into one store where she got the haircut, the uh, the outfits, the everything, and then walked out of the same store? It felt like the same store. I mean, if it was the same store, why would she be using the same credit card over and over and over again? Uh, none of it makes sense, Desi. I one think one that's store. what we're, we're on the same page about is none of it makes sense, but... Anyway, so but she... I mean, I always get my hair cut at the same place that I get my clothes and everything else. So definitely makes sense. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Good for you. Um, one of the other things uh, that ha that I I was thrown off by was the necklace she was wearing because I I felt like it felt maybe like in some other version this was like a talisman. Did you you know the necklace I'm talking about? It was like this huge crystal star necklace that she's wearing. Like No, I didn't uh, notice that one, but I did notice Jake's necklace because that was such a nineties, early two thousand thing to have the shell necklace. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. That's what you notice about Jake is his necklace. <laughs> is that what you appreciate about him, Desi? His and necklace? his flowing locks. Okay. Um so now that we've got uh, we've got the the again the the premises together, but now they 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 make an appointment to go meet with, uh, or they make a, an appointment with each other to go meet with the women in the Chinese restaurant to find out that um, you know this was a spell and it can't be broken until they follow up with what's on the fortune cookie. I feel like they didn't stay in the restaurant and hold those people accountable for long enough. <laughs> no. I mean, what are you going to do at that point? You've got to go figure out the fortune and how to get it back. You can't I guess. I mean, I guess around. that's how that works. So they Although, go. I probably wouldn't have been happy with them afterwards. After it was broken, I probably would have been like, what the heck? Yeah. You can't just do that to people. Yeah. Uh, you're mean. Well, you guys have to go figure it out. Okay. I mean, it just didn't. It seems like there should have been more accountability on that one. Maybe I'm wrong. So they go back and try to find the original, um, the original fortune. They find it. They realize, you know, they try to figure out what's got to happen, and they've got to sort of be able to like make a sacrifice for each other to be able to get out of it, so that they can like lovingly and truly understand each other. So they go in, um, like, to the dinner, the big rehearsal dinner, not having figured that out yet but apparently the rehearsal dinner was located conveniently right down the street from the house of blues where the wango right. tango auditions were so uh her friends come in to kidnap her and uh and they take obviously the wrong person and she doesn't know how to play anything i'm not gonna lie i do think as cringy as it is the moment where she uh where the 
Anna, as her mom, tells her, look, I've unplugged your guitar. Just go out there and pretend like you know what you're doing. And then they cut to Jamie Lee Curtis, like, shredding backstage. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. I don't know what it is. It's a Disney moment. It's one where you kind of forgive yourself for how cringy it is. Or am I wrong? I thought it was cute. No, I thought it was super cute. I, there were many times that you could cringe in this movie. That wasn't one of them for me. I thought it was a, a cute moment. Okay, so speaking of cringy, cringy moments, all of the almost romantic scenes with Mark Harmon, the way that this is where I bought into the idea that Anna was in her mom's body is because it felt super awkward, even though right. it's just Mark Harmon holding Jamie Lee Curtis's hand. It's like, dude, you don't even get it. Like, how do I tell you that that's really her daughter that you're holding the hand of and not her? <laughs> Right. Um, I felt cringier about uh, Jake falling in love with Tess. That was a little weird. And um, then um, he like wants to break up the wedding. And I mean, I thought that was really that that was super cringy because he's I'm assuming underage. Um, well, he's supposed to be older than Anna. But we don't okay, know about so how much. So if she's fifteen, the oldest he could be because he's in the high school, I think, is eighteen. Eighteen, but fifth, yeah, fifteen and eighteen, yeah, no, that's. That, I don't. I don't think that's legal. Well, so, I hope. I I was hoping he was sixteen or seventeen. I mean, he's at least old enough to ride the bike. Yeah, so sixteen would still work, right? Yeah. But then again, the same way that, you know, the Mark Harmon making moves on the Jamie Lee Curtis and when she's supposed to be Anna, when Ma, when Tess as Anna, like, goes in for the kiss with him. Oh, yes. Again, you, you buy into it at that point that you're like, hey, wait a minute. No, no, no. What are you doing, lady? Why are you kissing yeah. this dude? He, and at least I was hoping he was underage. Um, so that makes it cringy. So it's like, I don't know what's worse, him being 18 and then, okay, he winds up with a 15-year-old, or him being 17 and getting kissed by a 40-something-year-old. I don't know. Either way doesn't seem good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm just looking uh, through to find the, the image of... Uh... Of Jamie Lee Curtis backstage shredding because I feel like it's worth it, it's it's worth a look. There she is. She's just she's really getting into it. I think that I don't I don't play guitar, but I think they probably did a fairly good job of them playing guitar. I know that there were some training, uh, like that the girls had some training to learn how to hold the guitar and play the guitar leading up to it. But yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Yeah, I was wondering about that because. I was confident that Lindsay Lohan didn't actually know how to play the guitar, but it seemed to sync up fairly well. So then I was, uh, I wasn't sure. Yeah. They, I mean, they do look good doing it. Um, the, in this movie though, um, the soul skater, Christina is her name, Vidal, um, okay. that played Maddie is actually singing that song. Yeah, which is cool. I believed that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, when uh, they're playing at the wedding, uh, Lindsay Lohan is actually singing that song. So I feel, and, and I think they both sound great. I, you know, so let, let's talk about the music because the music was almost all remakes and familiar music, but remakes of music. Um, did, Baby one more time. Yeah. <laughs> From Bowling for Soup, by the way, um, I had to look that up. Bowling for Soup did hit me, baby, one more time. And, um, I mean, honestly, the soundtrack's kind of cool in a late 90s. I mean, it, late it's 90s. not as good as the Brink soundtrack, but it was still pretty good. So, anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to stop talking about Brink. Um, we're you never going to stop talking about Brink. You have a problem. <laughs> Um, you know what? Here, here's your penance. Uh, here's here's where you come into play. We're going to go ahead and do trivia now. You've brought this on yourself. Oh, I was going to let Lord. you go okay. without trivia, 
but now we have to do this. And by the way, thank you guys for being with us, for sticking with us tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you. If you can give the video a like, help other people to find it, uh, and uh, and also subscribe to WDWNT TV if you have not already. Um, so ready? Here's here's the stuff. Um, what's the name of Anna's band? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, In, I'm definitely going to fail this. Uh, well, I mean, maybe. Uh, she actually has a t-shirt for her band that she's wearing when she first wakes up. And I'm trying to see if I can get a good shot of it. It looks a lot like the Sex Pistols logo. Um, but uh, it is called, the band's called Pink Slip. I don't know if you can see that from there. Oh, but, that's uh, a weird name for high schoolers to have for a band. Yeah, but they actually, they they introduced them at the Wango Tango uh, audition. So, um, the uh, th her teacher who is out to get her, which, who by the way, is played brilliantly by Mr. Steven Tobloski, who is a great character actor who is in A Million and Two Things. Um, yeah. Uh, he is Mr. Bates is his name. He uh he gives them a pop quiz on what Hamlet. Yeah, there you go. Uh what is Mr. Bates' first name? Ethan. Close. Elton. Elton. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So that was the weird thing, too, that she ends up recognizing him. Um, the mom in Anna's body recognizes him in class and realizes the reason that, you know, Anna's been paranoid about, like, oh, this teacher's out to get me. And she's like, why would he be out to get you? And then in seeing Elton Bates, she realizes that he's just being petty because uh, Tess told him off and didn't, like, accept his advances in high school. And so now she's getting back at him or he's getting back at her. Um, you should know this because you've been fixated on him. Chad Michael Murray's character, Jake, was riding a motorcycle. What brand of motorcycle? They even mention it in the movie. Toshiba? Tom, t I feel like it started with a T. Do you? Do you feel that? No. No. <sighs> what is it? It's a Ducati. Um, no, because... it's not. This high schooler is riding around on a Ducati. You're gonna you're gonna make me find a screen grab of it here. Hold on a second. Um, here you go. This is that. I same. find that very hard to believe. You, I can't believe that. I feel like I would have remembered that for sure. There it is. That's they bonkers. they even mention it because she as as Anna Tess as Anna says something about you're not riding on his Harley and he goes it's a Ducati. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's why he needs to work two jobs. <laughs> uh, do you want an easy one or a hard one? A medium one. <laughs> a medium one. Uh, what was the name of uh, the restaurant where they went? The Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I have no idea. Pei Pei's. <laughs> House of Chang. Okay. It was on the it was on the menus and on the sign outside, and all, I think they also mention it once. Um, uh, the the hard one was going to be what was uh, what room number is uh, Mr. Bates's uh, classroom. Uh, A113. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> 202. Uh, the House of Blues where they were playing was having an anniversary. It said so on the logo that was on the stage. What was what year anniversary was it for the House of Blues? I So I just finally watched Lightyear, and all I'm think, seeing in my head is the 40th anniversary from that one. So I have no uh, idea for the House of Blues. Uh, it was the 10th anniversary. So, I mean, it was, again, it was on the back of the stage, but it was up there for a while. So I figured maybe because I get called out for doing numbers so much. Um, the, <laughs> the other one I was going to ask you was when, um, when Anna has to go as Tess to the little brother's, uh, homeroom, uh, to, to see the teacher, what was that classroom number? But that there's no way you would have known that it was 24. <laughs> um, 
But in, in that, in doing that, that's the first time where she kind of bonds with her little brother, right? So that she's going to do a teacher's conference and, and she goes in and finds out that he wrote this story about how like his, his sister is uh, his hero. And she's like, why didn't you ever say that before? And he's like, oh, don't tell her. I love that we fight. Um, but the rest of the time, Harry's kind of a nightmare, isn't he? As a parent, you do you met just... my brother. Well, I was going to say, as a parent, how, do, how does it strike you with the kid being the way he is? There, I feel like, um, you know, there's always one that's more rambunctious than the other. It's, and it's usually the second born. From, from my experience, uh, second born kids seem to be more rambunctious than the first born. Okay, that's fair. Um, My husband's a second born as well. He is super rambunctious. <laughs> and you would say that to his face? Oh, he knows. He's a middle child. <laughs> um, so once uh, once mom goes and shreds uh, as Anna, Anna as mom goes and shreds at the House of Blues, that's like her sacrifice that she's doing. Um or the mom being on stage is a sacrifice she's doing for her daughter. And then the vice versa is when she, which I believe that was the name of another SWAT movie. Um, she is, uh, she comes back and she's like, Hey, can you just break this down for Ryan quickly? Because obviously we can't explain to him, which is a neat catch 22. They can't explain to anybody that they've switched bodies because no one will believe them. They have no proof. There's no right. way to do it. They'll they kind go of, to a psych ward. They kind of, yeah, they establish that from the outset and they do that in the 2018 movie as well as they establish that there's really, that's not something we can do. So this is how we work around it. We just have to pretend to be each other until this wears off. So she says, hey, you know, I can't have you marrying uh, Ryan, and uh, obviously you're still hung up on the fact that he's trying to replace your dad. And so let's just – can you just break it down, break it, break him uh, – break it to him gently, and, uh, and, you know, maybe we'll do this at another time. And instead she decides to go in and say, look, you know, um, he's been great. You know, uh, everything's fine, and I, you know, basically bless this marriage. And then they have the the magical moment where there's an earthquake. Everybody's holding on to everything, and Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan look up, and and the camera pans across to show their bodies. Uh, I guess their souls switching bodies again. And then it's all resolved, right? Everything's hunky dory. Yeah. And then they have a wedding the next day, and they serve. It's a halibut. really good thing. It didn't out. happen at midnight because how was uh, Tess going to explain to Ryan she didn't want to kiss him right after that speech um, because basically the earthquake happened and then Ryan goes in for a, a big old smooch and that would have been really awkward if it was still Anna. True. Yeah, it would have been super and you, awkward. And she couldn't say no in front of all of those people at their rehearsal dinner. Yeah. Then everybody would have been clanging their glasses, and yeah, you can't you can't get away from it at that point. Yep. Um, that was okay. a really fancy rehearsal dinner, by the way. Yes, it was huge. So I mean, my rehearsal what... dinner was like a barbecue in my grandparents' backyard. Um, mine was at like some local restaurant, and like just that like in a like banquet a, room or something. A wedding reception, but just the rehearsal dinner and we never actually got to see the rehearsal i would have liked to see anna as tess do the rehearsal part of it yeah don't know um but then they have a big wedding reception and the uh and the pink slips play the wedding reception all of them without their shoes on just jamming on the stage playing ultimate uh which is what i put in the title was it was this the ultimate version of this movie um and uh, and then it's like happily ever after, except for uh, Pepe's mom comes over and hands fortune cookies to the grandfather and uh, and the little brother in a moment that seems like maybe this is going to be, you know, the There's setup, be a sequel. The, right? The setup yeah. for the sequel, which could have been Summer Switch, but in Summer Switch, the book, um, it's the it's the dad and the son, not the. Um... But there is, what well, I mean, I don't want to say there is no dad, but. It's not like it's his dad. It would have been a switch with Ryan. 
Yeah. Which would have been fine because we would have had a Mark Harmon sequel. Hello. That would have been great. Yeah. Um, if you watch on – and again, I I love when they have some extra features on uh, Disney+. Plus. If you watch the extras, there are two alternate versions of this ending. One of them really? where they actually – crack them open and the earth shakes and so they show that from far away so you have the impression that that switch has happened and that that's starting um well it wouldn't have happened until midnight then yeah there's also a a, a deleted scene with stacy where um mom as anna smacks stacy like oh and so he thought like the director sets it up and says he thought it was a little too harsh um but I mean, what else is Stacy in? She looked familiar. She looks like she's played this character before, where she's like a mean girl. Well, she was going for class president. I don't know if maybe that's what you were thinking about. No. She was uh, funny enough. She was in a Cinderella story, which I think was also with Chad Michael Murray. That's it. She she was the same exact character in a Cinderella story. So just swap out uh, Lindsay Lohan for Hilary Duff, which you could have easily done back in the late 90s, early 2000s. How dare you and... during Lindsay Lohan month say that? How dare I you? I mean, they were the two Disney stars at the time. Okay, well. And, and... Probably like the Cinderella story movie better. Well, and as you know, as as Disney's kind of model was, is they would bring in someone to do uh, a guest shot, who would then get their own show, who would then be in decoms, who would then get like a record deal. You know, that was kind of how that happened. And I feel like Lindsay Lohan had all of that um, with Disney. And so, yeah, I mean, she was a. Hillary she was a Duff big had deal. a Switch movie. Um... What was the singer from the Lizzie McGuire movie sh that she switched places with? So, I mean, it was just a thing back then, I guess. To do the switch movies? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm kind of looking through, and I don't really see anything here. In, in, in essence, in some pieces, Parent Trap is sort of a switch movie, too. Yeah. Because they switch places. Um, but... I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I, I, I want to get your final thoughts, but before we do, is there anything that we've left out here? Anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about? Can't think of anything other than I wish that Mean Girls was a Disney movie. Right. Yeah. Just so you guys <laughs> know, when I brought up the idea of doing the Lindsay Lohan month, everyone uh, on our that that sits on the the panels was like. Um, yeah, Mean Girls, let's do it. And I'm like, hmm, that's a Paramount movie. We can't, we can't do that. I mean, she does have quite the, uh, the resume when it comes to Disney movies, though. So Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, like we mentioned, Get a Clue, um, Parent Trap, Freaky Friday, and Herbie Fully Loaded are all the movies we're going to do. But I wish Life Size had been on here. I probably would have swapped that out with one of the others if that was a thing uh, with Tyra Banks where her Barbie becomes real. That one, I think, would have been would have been an interesting one to review, but for some reason right now it's not on uh, Disney+, Plus, so we'll have to do that at another time. All right, so now is the moment of truth, Desi. And again, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight, for, for put, putting up with a little bit of technical issues at the beginning. Sorry about that. There was some issue where YouTube wasn't picking us up, but uh, we got through it. Um, and thank you guys for, uh, for, for being here. And if you haven't already, please give the video a like. Next week, we'll, we, we will be reviewing Get a Clue. This is the continuation of uh, Lindsay Lohan Month, followed by Herbie Fully Loaded, <laughs> Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, and Ending the Month with The Parent Trap. So please join us for all of those. Uh, study up, watch them, see what, you know, and let us know what you think. Uh, but now is the moment of truth for you, Desi. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you fully, do you fully understand Loaded? the responsibility? No. Do you fully understand the responsibility <laughs> that we're giving to you here? Because the people need to know, would you recommend this movie? Yeah, I think I would. I think it's cute. Um, I, I think that um, of the Lindsay Lohan movies that we're doing this month, this is probably my favorite one of those. 
Um, so if I'm going to be recommending a Lindsay Lohan movie on Disney Plus, this is probably going to be the one that I would pick. Though, I still don't think it is anywhere close to Lindsay Lohan's best movie, which we all know is Mean Girls, because that movie is fetch. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and we can't review Mean Girls, but I will say that I I, I didn't expect this one to be as high, like to enjoy it as much as I did, because I felt like it was going to be one of those that was sort of lost in time and that was only good back when it, you know, was released. I was, I'm really looking forward more to Herbie Fully Loaded, but that's because I love the Herbie franchise. But <laughs> I was surprised at how relevant this movie stayed, uh, how good it still is. It didn't have too many things that, that made it too aged. I mentioned the technology was part of it. Um, there was like a couple other problematic things on it, but for the most part, it was a really solid movie, and I would absolutely recommend that, and especially over the others. I think that the original Freaky Friday is probably uh, more of a classic, but I think it probably doesn't stand up as much. Uh, 1976 probably wouldn't be as good um this one i think is the strongest of the four freaky fridays i i, I you can't find the shelly long one anywhere and i think they probably buried it with good reason no offense to shelly long but i think all three of those movies were probably pretty bad and then the musical one doesn't seem like it needed to happen uh it was too soon after the uh this remake too i would like to see um them do the boris's billions today like, let's just bring Chad Michael Murray back. I haven't seen him in anything in a long time. Uh, let's bring him back and let's let's do what are Anna and Jake up to now. Maybe they're getting together for their 20th high school reunion and uh, we gotta we gotta know what they're up to. They probably have a teenage daughter by now. Maybe. Um, Chad Michael Murray was in a reboot of uh, The Lone Ranger, a TV show at one point and I uh, for some reason I remember him very well in that I know he's been in Riverdale more recently um, and you know obviously I think his biggest thing that he was known for would uh, would have been One Tree Hill so yeah um, which was not long after this this was 2003 Freaky Friday One Tree Hill started in 2003 so um, yeah maybe we'll do a Chad Michael Murray month <laughs> maybe not uh again right thank after you. the eric von detten month mm, i feel like we've already done all the good eric von detten we did princess diaries and we did uh we all did right. uh what was the name of that movie i forget um brink the greatest that's the one of all time false false uh <laughs> but thank you guys for watching let us know we'll we'll drop a, a link in in the uh in the chat below this once the, the video is done to see uh is this your favorite version of Freaky Friday, um, and we we hope it is because uh, you know I don't see us going back and reviewing the others. <laughs> so thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for uh, for joining us on Deep in the Plus each and every week. We appreciate you. Thank you to our Wigs members. We love our Wigs. If you were unfamiliar, that is the WDWNT Interglobe Society, uh, and you can find out more about that at patreon.com patreon.com forward slash WDWNT. Desi, thanks so much. And uh, have a great week, and we will see you guys next time. Love you. Bye.